very, very high quality, almost solid gold, right? 22 karat gold banding on a piece of porcelain made in Japan, hand painted, dates to about 1900, the Orientalist period in America, and value on your vase is just about $750 based on a sales record where a similar piece has sold. All right, don't drop it. Beautiful. Do you put anything in it? No. Handles here, and of course the top goes up, nice thin neck, right, and then it opens up to what's called a lotus form in the neck. Nice. Thank you. You're welcome. How'd you acquire this, Max? Uh, it was my mother's. Also, this is German made. All right, trying to look Asian. This piece is earthenware, it's fired at a low temperature in a kiln, the pottery is, and this particular piece is worth about $25. There's porcelain, there's earthenware, there's raku, there's you know, all different types. Do you have porcelain? I just taught you this, Bethany, don't no worry. I went undergrad to Michigan. Are you from Ohio State? Is that the problem? What's the problem? No. <laughs> so what you've got here is you've got a nice piece of porcelain, nice bright white clay. You have a Nippon mark, which means it dates between 1891 and 1921, right? And this particular mark is green. The green Nippon mark means, oh, the highest quality that Nippon makes. Nippon means it's made in Japan. It is hand-painted, 22 karat gold banding all the way around. Someone's painting this on, gilding this on, right? Now, all hand-painted Japanese piece. How did you acquire it? Um, my grandmother asked me to come over to her house. She's uh, not doing very well and asked if I would take something from her house to remember her by. Oh, grandma isn't doing too well and she said, please come over and take something to remember her by. I found that shoved under a small table. This was shoved under a small table, right? She said, I want you to have it, honey. Covered in dust. She said, Covered in a dust. friend of her friend gave to her. Her friend gave to her. So does this remind you of grandma somehow? Does it really? What other things would remind you of Grandma? You've got to ask. I know you're all going crazy. Oh gosh, it's terrible. Ask. Because most grandmas don't realize that you really want, I really want the clock that I used to hear tick on Sunday when we come for pancakes after church. I really want the pick, ask. You know, and if you feel bad and you don't want to just give it to her, offer her something for it. Money, chores, whatever it might be. She gives you, gives you a piano, plays music, and you should always play the piano, so that makes you feel like that. Okay. So, but if you don't ask, they don't know. You know who ends up with this stuff? The auctioneer's daughter. The neighbor who never took in your mail. <laughs> He'll go get it out of the dumpster, right? The guy who does the lawn, nice guy, but should he have your grandmother's clock? No. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you have to ask and try to keep these things in the family. Value on this piece, which dates to the turn of the 20th century, is worth about $175. Nice. Yeah. The 50s. Marilyn, you know, she died in 62. And basically she's got the little earrings and the necklace. And you put a little plant coming out of her head. I always thought it was a little weird. <laughs> I don't know. How'd you acquire it, Cindy? Mid-century modern pieces, pieces like this, relatively glamorous, right? You know, our generation will have the Kim Kardashian head vases. <laughs> and instead of something coming out of her head, it'll be like a plant out of her butt, I guess. <laughs> I'm guessing. I got nothing against the girl. I got a big butt, too. But, you know. <laughs> Although, I, that's, it's very glamorous, they tell me. I, don't know. I never could work with mine, but, you know, she's doing a good job. <laughs> anyway, this is a Napco piece made in Japan. This piece is dated 1950 right on the bottom. And most times you don't see a date on the bottom of a piece, most times what you see, in fact, is a model number that just looks like a date. In this particular case, it's actually a dated piece. It has some faux earrings, some faux pearls. It's got the best eyelashes. My fake eyelashes never look like this. <laughs> it's got the best fake eyelashes I've seen in a long time. And the interior once did have a plant in it. Value on it, about 12 bucks. It's a lot of history and not a lot of value. <laughs> it has a lovely bulbous body, right? It has, of course, repeated forms, something called mori eyes, which is wet slipware. They actually paint the slipware on or the clay on, so you can actually touch the texture nature of it. All these little beads, all this little bead work, and, of course, these nice incanthus leaves. Now, when you turn it over on the bottom, it says, Roy, it says Dalton Lambeth, and that says 1876. Then it has some inscriptions.
described little monograms of the person who actually designed it. Is it from 1876? And did Royal Dalton, they call it Royal Dalton because they got the Royal Commission from the Queen, said, you're a very good pottery manufacturer, I want my pottery to be made by you. And they, that's deemed the Royal Commission. So that's why they call it Royal Dalton, Royal Copenhagen and such. This piece is a piece of Royal Dalton. They, of course, moved to Lambeth in 1871. Here's my question for you. It says 1876. Why is it marked that way? Just because it's the date? This is one of the premier pieces for the World's Fair, the Centennial World's Fair in 1876 in Philadelphia. This piece is made by the English manufacturing pottery firm called Royal Dalton to display at the World's Fair. That's why it has an 1876 on the bottom. It's a big deal. Oh. They don't all have that. It's not just a year date. Most of these marks are not based on years. Oh. This one's made for the centennial. Did the family live in Philadelphia? No. Ancestors? Everybody lived here, Texas. Well, Detroit. Detroit, mm -hmm. better. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get you up to a main, a main mm -hmm. uh, East Coast city, if you can, right, where we would have distribution of such pieces. Mm -hmm. Okay. This particular piece is rather rare. It just sits on your curio. In the cabinet, yeah. In the cabinet, China cabinet. Mm -hmm. Do you open it about once a month, let a little bit of the heat escape? You should open it about once a month, let a little bit of the heat escape. He is doing more damage than dust will ever hope to. Value on the piece in my hand is about $4,000. Uh -huh. oh. Take a deep breath, take a deep breath. No heart attacks, I do not know how to use the defibrillator. <laughs> Don't have a heart attack. 